Back in 1996, way before 100% of Earth's population owned a copy of Skyrim, Bethesda released the second Elder Scrolls game, Daggerfall. It sometimes gets labeled as more of a fantasy life simulator than an action RPG because of the huge amount of freedom it gives you and its extensive role-playing options. You can do some pretty wild stuff that you don't see in the newer Elder Scrolls games, like fly around on your horse, scale buildings and walls using a climbing skill, get arrested, go to court, and lie or debate your way out of trouble. Or, the most classic example, take out a massive loan from a bank, buy a boat, and then sail away without paying back the loan, and never return to that country again to avoid any trouble. The overwhelming mainstream popularity of the modern Elder Scrolls games casts a shadow over Daggerfall, but Daggerfall is actually a really good game, and it's made significantly better and much more accessible to modern players by a project known as Daggerfall Unity. While lots of Elder Scrolls fans look ahead, wishing the Elder Scrolls 6 would come out sometime this century, Gavin Clayton, also known as Interkarma, has been looking back at Daggerfall. In 2014, he started a project to port Daggerfall to the Unity engine. On Daggerfall Unity's website, this project is said to still be under active development, but it's basically complete, and has been for some time, and recent updates are mainly just to refine this already finished project. The Unity version includes everything you could want from the original DOS version of Daggerfall, plus a whole lot more, like bug fixes, higher screen resolutions, better controls, mod support, greater view distance, smoother gameplay, and a bunch of other enhancements that you can easily access and customize in the startup or in-game menu. It's like pumping Daggerfall full of steroids, but you don't necessarily have to. If you want, you can still use settings and mods that give you an experience very similar to the original DOS version of the game, just without all the bugs. Daggerfall costs a whopping zero dollars, and you can download it for free from a few different places, like Steam or the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages. You need these classic game files to run Daggerfall Unity, and once you have them, you can head over to dfuworkshop.com to download Daggerfall Unity, which is also free. Installing it is easy, and there are guides on the website that can walk you through it. GOG also offers a version called Daggerfall Unity GOG Cut that comes with a package of mods already pre-installed. If you're unfamiliar with installing mods yourself, or just want to conveniently install everything in one go, this might sound like an attractive option, but it's not the best possible way to play the game. Because, as of the time of this video, the GOG Cut hasn't received the same updates that DFU has, and it currently runs on an older version. So you'd be lacking any of the newer refinements, and you could run into compatibility issues if you want to use updated or newer mods. Installing mods manually for Daggerfall is so simple that even an orc could do it. <coughs> you go to nexusmods.com and find the Daggerfall Unity page. Read the description of a mod to see if it's something you'd want. Download it, and then drag the file into a folder within your DFU files called Mods. That's all you have to do for most of them. Some, like quest packs or textures, you'll drag into those folders instead. I feel like it's necessary to bring up mods because, for me, they're an integral part of the Daggerfall Unity experience. Despite the enhancements that DFU adds, there are still some aspects of the game that, without mods, can be pretty off-putting. For example, you might get a quest that sends you to go infiltrate a castle somewhere. But when you travel to where it's supposed to be, there's nothing there. Or is there? Search around for a while and you'll realize that this impressive piece of architecture poking out of the ground is actually supposed to represent the castle. The Fixed Dungeon Exteriors mod makes places like this appear much more believable. If you want a major graphics and audio overhaul, you can use the Dream mod, which makes the game look and sound like a modern day remaster. And there are a bunch more which do things like add a new guild, improve lighting, let you fly airships, make taverns appear more interesting, add new quests and gameplay enhancements, make the skies look better, add a hotkey bar, and let you pet pigs. Okay, now I'll move on to Daggerfall's setting. If you thought the sheer size of Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim's worlds was breathtaking, then Daggerfall's map will make you asphyxiate. You could easily fit all three of those worlds inside of Daggerfall's and they would only occupy a small space on the map. During development, Bethesda procedurally generated the vast majority of Daggerfall's world, and its scope is mind-boggling. The map is reportedly over 1,600,000 square kilometers and has more than 15,000 locations. Some of these are relatively small or medium-sized towns, but there are also a lot of big cities, which look like, well, actual cities with tons of buildings condensed together. And don't forget the more than 4,000 dungeons that are so large and complex, they can land you in a psych ward if you don't learn an effective strategy to explore them. But as interesting as all this might sound, I know what you're probably thinking. Yes, huge stretches of terrain are bland and repetitive. And the towns and dungeons are all technically unique, but many of their individual parts are reused, so they often closely resemble each other. Once you've visited a few regions and witnessed the world's various climates, and its seasons, then you'll already have a pretty good idea of what most of the world looks like. But that's kind of the price you have to pay for such a massive game world, and considering the technology Bethesda had to work with at the time, it's still a really impressive accomplishment. Their ambition for this game was off the charts, 
There's something pretty awe-inspiring and immersive about knowing that even if you play for hundreds of hours, there are probably thousands of places that you won't even visit. Just the fact that they're there is mind-bending enough to make the game world feel epic. And there are of course mods that can spice things up a bit, by adding stuff like mountains, more enemy encounters, roads, new ways to travel, and more NPCs to liven up cities. You won't need to spend hours trekking around to get from place to place either, because you can fast travel basically anywhere. And if the repetitive areas and visuals still irritate you, you can always focus on the main quest, which does take you to unique and interesting places. The art design for some of these places is really well done. I really like the castle exteriors and the throne rooms. And the Palace of Sentinel even has a giant indoor greenhouse. Also, some of the late game main quest dungeons have some pretty crazy sections with really cool visuals. Two things that Daggerfall does offer a ton of variety with are what you can do in its world and who you can be. And on that note, it's a good time to talk about character creation. Daggerfall's character creation allows so much customization that it's one of the deepest systems I've ever come across. It's one of the things that was streamlined for the newer Elder Scrolls games, probably because it can seem intimidating to more casual players, but it's a lot more straightforward than it initially appears. It just gives you a ton of different options. You start by selecting your race, which you'll recognize if you've played other Elder Scrolls games. Dark Elves, Red Guards, Khajiits, all that fun stuff. Imperials and Orcs aren't there because Imperials didn't actually exist until Red Guard, and Orcs are mostly considered enemies in Daggerfall. Each race has its own special advantage, and some of these are better than others. At first, I wanted to be an Argonian, because they're badass lizard people, but their racial advantage is probably the worst one. If you plan to use archery a lot, you might want to pick a Wood Elf, and High Elves have a useful free immunity to paralysis. Once you decide, you then choose your gender and pick your class. You're better off making a custom class instead of taking the quiz or using any of the pre-built ones, because you get to pick your own skills. You'll start out more proficient at whatever skills you choose, and you'll need some of these to level up, so you want to make sure to pick some that you'll actually use, especially in the primary and major categories. And there are a lot of these to choose from, 35 in total. A few of them are a little pointless though. The language skills don't do anything besides give you a chance to pacify that specific enemy type, which you might not even encounter very often. So it's better to avoid these unless you want them for roleplaying purposes. Etiquette, on the other hand, gives you a chance to pacify guards in Daggerfall Unity. So if you plan to go on crime sprees, this one's a good choice so you can avoid hearing oh, 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 oh. You can also redistribute your attributes. Maybe you want to be all brawn and no brains, or really fast but with no luck. I went with a balanced approach for my first playthrough, although I docked some points in personality because I still have a grudge against Elder Scrolls NPCs from my time playing Oblivion. What is it, pawn scum? Speaking of NPCs, Daggerfall has a widespread reputation system that affects the reactions you get from certain groups across the game world. You can change your reputation with some of the game's broadest groups during character creation by using the Edit Reputations option and by the answers you give during a biography questionnaire. What I think is the most interesting part of character creation though is choosing special advantages and disadvantages. These work the same way as the racial advantages in that they'll stick with you throughout the entire game, but the major difference here is that they influence this slider which determines how difficult it is for you to level up, which is also affected by how many possible hit points you decide to gain each level. For me, this turned into a balancing act of trying to add cool and useful advantages while countering them with disadvantages so leveling wouldn't be too much of a chore. As you can see, this character creation system gives you an almost endless amount of possible builds. And since your choices significantly affect how you play the game, there's a good amount of replay value. Like the other Elder Scrolls games, Daggerfall is open-ended, and it gives you a ton of freedom with no obligation to complete the main quest. But since the game starts in a dungeon, this is where I want to start talking about gameplay. And unless you're specifically trying to avoid it, dungeon crawling is likely to take up a good chunk of your playtime. Dungeons in Daggerfall are usually massive labyrinths filled with enemies, and they can be really tough to navigate. You have a map, but it only gets uncovered as you explore. A lot of Daggerfall's quests send you to dungeons, and the objective is usually to locate an item or an NPC somewhere inside. And these quest locations could be literally anywhere. Most of the time, there's absolutely nothing to indicate how close or far you are from your goal. Finding a fancy looking room deep inside of a dungeon doesn't mean that it's an important location. You'll have to scour dungeons meticulously, searching every corner and crevice, and check your map often to see if there are any areas or hidden doors you pass by, all while dealing with the slew of enemies that constantly try to hinder you. These dungeons were difficult and frustrating the first couple of times I encountered them, and I was convinced that Bethesda created them with the sole intention of making me suffer. But once I got a better idea of what to expect and how to prepare for them, I got better at maintaining my sanity, and they ended up actually being one of my favorite aspects of the game. I didn't like their frequent use for frivolous quests though, but there are ways to avoid that, which I'll explain in a second. 
Using a recall spell at the entrance of a dungeon lets you teleport back to it at any time, which is ideal for when you finally locate your objective and don't want to backtrack all the way out. Or for if you run out of inventory space because you can access your cart near the entrance. Or maybe you just need a safe place to rest and heal. There are various strategies you can use for actual exploration. You could follow the right or left wall at every turn and see where it takes you. Or you could explore individual dungeon blocks which are represented by these yellow pixels on your map. What I usually did was let myself run around randomly for 5 minutes or so, killing every enemy and opening every door I came across, and then I'd check my map and backtrack to explore any areas that I missed along the way. This probably isn't the most efficient way to do it, but it's what worked best for me. What made me like Daggerfall's dungeons was how satisfying they felt to complete due to their complexity and size. But I think another big part of what allowed me to enjoy them was that I made sure I didn't encounter them too often. Having to go on an epic dungeon raid for every standard quest would have been taxing and time consuming. But thankfully, Daggerfall Unity gives you some options here. In the enhancements menu, you can toggle an option that lets you choose what quest you get from a guild leader, instead of receiving one randomly, so you can avoid the ones that take place in dungeons. Even without this option enabled, you can just decline random quests until you get one you want. These other types of quests send you off to do things like track down an NPC in a town somewhere, escort an NPC to a specific location, rid a house of monsters, and other various tasks. You could also do quests for a guild like the Thieves Guild, none of which send you to dungeons. Another option is to enable smaller dungeons in the Unity menu, which does exactly what it says it does. Instead of a maze of winding corridors, the dungeons are much more straightforward and should take only a couple of minutes to complete. However, this won't have any effect on main quest dungeons which stay their regular size. There's also a popular mod called the Archaeologists, which adds an entirely new guild to Daggerfall, and you can purchase an item from them called Locator Devices. When activated, these add a quest marker on your screen, but in order to use them, you have to have explored a certain amount of the dungeon already, so they're not like a free ride to your objective. If you avoid dungeons too much though, it'll cause you to miss the best opportunities in the game to level up combat skills and find useful loot. Both the enemies and loot you find in dungeons scale according to your level. Initially, you fight mostly rats, bats, and spiders, and eventually you progress to tougher enemies like vampires, liches, and daedra. When you're still at a low level, combat can feel like a bit of a chore. Like in Morrowind, you start out like a toddler at his first day of wiffle ball practice, and you'll probably miss the huge majority of your swings. But with a little patience and leveling, you'll start to land blows more often, and it gets more fun. It doesn't really compare to the newer games and how responsive or fluid it feels, but it still works surprisingly well for an older game. Here's an interesting fact about looting in Daggerfall. You know how in most games something like a piece of cloth takes up inventory space, but the 97 million gold pieces you're carrying takes up no space at all? Not in Daggerfall. Gold has weight to it, and it factors into how much you can carry in your inventory. This would be annoying if it weren't for banks, which let you deposit gold and obtain letters of credit, which work just like gold but aren't nearly as heavy. Details like this help Daggerfall's world feel realistic and immersive. And there's a whole lot more to do outside of dungeons other than banking, and there's no correct order or necessity to do any of them if you don't want to. Maybe you just want to sneak around at night and steal from shops so you can make a fortune selling stolen goods. Or if you want more of a challenge, try stealing in broad daylight. If the guards show up, try to kill them. And why stop there? Start killing NPCs too. Eventually you'll get noticed by the Dark Brotherhood who want to make use of your murderous habits. You could also join the Thieves Guild to try and move your way up the ranks of the criminal underworld. And if you don't want to be a criminal, there are plenty of law-abiding factions you can join like the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, and a variety of different knightly orders and temples. Or you could join none of these and do quests for random NPCs you meet in taverns or nobles you see in castles. This level of freedom probably sounds familiar to you if you've played Morrowind, Oblivion, or Skyrim, and it's really cool to see it implemented in an older game. Joining a faction and doing quests for them is a great way to access some of Daggerfall's coolest features. As you complete quests and raise skills relevant to that faction, you'll increase your rank, which unlocks services around the guild hall or temple. The most useful of these are the crafting services, which let you do things like make custom spells, brew potions, and enchant items. Guild halls and temples also give you access to Daedra summoning, which can send you on quests to find rare unique items called artifacts. Okay, so maybe you want to take a break from working for factions for a while, and just want to live a simple life somewhere. You take out a loan and buy a house. You're a law-abiding citizen and don't want to piss off the guards, so you'll have to do some dungeon crawling to earn enough gold to pay off your debt. But one day, while exploring a nearby dungeon, you encounter a vampire, or maybe a werewolf or even a boar. But that's not a big deal, these are relatively common enemies, and you've seen them before, except this time... <laughs> In Daggerfall, your character can contract various diseases from enemies, which can eventually lead to your character's death if they're not treated. But there are a couple of diseases with more interesting symptoms, vampirism and lycanthropy. 
and there's a small chance of contracting these whenever you're attacked by a vampire, werewolf, or wereboar, which is a werewolf with a potbelly. Becoming one of these gives you some significant stat boosts, but they also come attached with some disadvantages. Werewolves and wereboars need to hunt innocent NPCs every so often to keep their maximum health from decreasing. And you can probably guess the disadvantages for vampires. They need to feed on the blood of living creatures, and also take damage from sunlight and holy places. Vampires also get their own quests that are attached to whatever bloodline they belong to. The disadvantages of lycanthropy and vampirism can get intrusive if you want to spend time exploring the world and doing quests without having to stop and worry about killing innocents or avoiding sunlight. But they make for great in-game content. With so much to do in Daggerfall's world, it's easy to forget about or ignore the main quest, but it's worth checking out at some point. Before the game starts, you're shown a cutscene featuring your old pal, Emperor Uriel Septim. He's sending you to the Kingdom of Daggerfall to try and complete two missions. Number one, investigate why the ghost of the former King of Daggerfall, Lysandus, haunts the city of Daggerfall. And number two, investigate why a mysterious and apparently important letter the Emperor sent to the Queen of Daggerfall never arrived. Soon after you reach the Iliac Bay, the area where the game takes place, you're contacted by one of the Emperor's spies, who tells you that a good way to start investigating is to speak with the royal families of the major powers in the region. But you can't do this until you reach a certain level, because they're too self-important to talk to some worthless weakling who gets beat up by rats. <laughs> you'll have to wait for these royal families to contact you by sending you letters. It's common for a lot of the main quests to have a level requirement, and this is probably the game's way of urging you to seek out some of the other content that's available besides the main quest. Figuring out how to continue the main quest line can be a little confusing at first. There are also multiple quest lines which deal with different characters and subplots. But due to the level requirements and the sheer amount of other content in the game, it's definitely possible that you'll do some of these quests very far apart from each other, which can make the entire narrative a little hard to follow. Also, most of the main quests are long dungeon crawls that can sometimes take hours to complete, which also makes the story elements feel spaced out. You're given a sprinkling of story text before and after each quest, but there usually isn't much storytelling during the actual quests. I do think that Daggerfall's plot is pretty interesting though, it just took me a while to wrap my head around it. I'd recommend using a guide, not necessarily to help you complete quests, but so you'll know when and how to start them, and so you can go back and browse story summaries if you get lost. Like a lot of the other quests in the game, most of the main quests have time limits once you start them. They're not short enough to make you rush, but you'll have to be careful of getting sidetracked. Once you start interacting with the various rulers around the game world, you'll learn that they do in fact have some info that can help you on your mission, but in true arrogant noble fashion, they won't give it to you for free you'll have to do favors for them, and in return, they'll fill you in on what they know. In doing so, you become involved in their various schemes and uncover some pretty blatant corruption. Eventually, you'll learn about a really powerful item that the rulers are trying to get their hands on, unless you can get to it first. I thought the lore surrounding this mysterious item was really interesting. It's not revealed until near the end of the game though, so I won't spoil it here. And this, along with the choices you get at the end, which impact the story's final outcome, made for a pretty entertaining climax. The majority of main quests send you to dungeons, and these ones were all handcrafted during development, unlike the game's other dungeons which were mostly randomly generated. But that doesn't mean that they're any less confusing. They're actually the hardest dungeons in the game, but also the best ones, if you can muster the patience to get through them. There were a few instances when I considered tossing my computer into a wood chipper, like one obscure puzzle where you have to somehow randomly figure out that you need to press on a tiny floating skull in order to teleport to the next location and there's an important NPC who hides deep inside one of the dungeons surrounded by tough enemies, and you have to return all the way back here several times just to progress that questline. But overall, I still had a good time with it, and during the last couple of quests the dungeons got really weird, but not in a bad way, which made them really fun to try and complete. Daggerfall is definitely worth checking out, and not just because it's interesting to see the early implementation of some of the Elder Scrolls' now signature features, although that was part of the appeal for me, but it's a great game in its own right, with its own unique aspects, and it has an insanely large scope even for an Elder Scrolls game with tons of content. I would have been way more reluctant to try it if it weren't for Daggerfall Unity. The DOS version doesn't look like it's aged very well, and it was filled with bugs, but the Unity version runs great, and it's definitely one of the best fan revivals of a classic game ever. Thank you.